Welcome everybody. Welcome to the 33rd Annual Conference of the U United States Psychotronics Association in Chicago, Illinois. I'm very glad to see all of you out there, honored by the presence and the wisdom of Eliz Elizabeth Rauscher. PhD. Elizabeth was on the original research team in the physics department of Stanford University studying the process of remote viewing. Her understanding of the psychic powers of the mind is second to none. This researcher and experimenter has conducted over 30 years of research on intentional will and over 80 remote perception experiments. She is currently serving on the USPA board of directors. Her topic today is Mind Dynamics in Space and Time, a scientist explores the nature and properties of consciousness. Please welcome Elizabeth Rauscher. It's good to be here at another USPA. I've enjoyed this group since 1981 when Bob Butley called me up and I said, what is that group about? I have no idea, but I came, and I've been coming ever since, so I enjoy it very much. So whoever's gonna do the transparencies, we'll have to get ready to do that. <laughs> anyway, what I'm gonna talk about is the history and some of the uh, fact that there's actually been quite an ancient tradition of remote perception or remote viewing. It was called remote viewing, but some of the perception is in sense perception, even hearing people's um, communication telepathically. And the reason we uh, used the remote viewing idea, the word remote viewing, was to eliminate the problem of categorizing, is it clairvoyance, telepathy, and so forth. So the thing is that whatever the brain does, it does the easiest modality there is. Next, transparency. Um, there's all kinds of visual perceptions that are not ordinary perceptions through the optic chiasm and through the optical system of the eye. Some meditators see the blue pearl as spiritual wisdom. I've seen something recently, I saw this when I meditated regularly, and I see like the eye of God, which is Ari, the symbol from ancient Egypt, where an eye is looking at you. So you're the observer, but you're being observed. Uh, visions of future events, uh, the intuition to do something, to avoid something that may be a problem, the quest of the shaman and remote viewing and other modalities of seeing without ordinary perception. Next. We don't see with just the ordinary optical eye system going through the optic chiasm into the occipital lobes at the back of the brain. There's a lot of vision that we have and see, such as dreams, that are not through ordinary perception or ordinary modality of seeing. Next. So actually, I heard about the work at SRI International with Hal Putoff and Russell Targ and Ingo Swan, and I set up my group at Berkeley to study remote perception, and I also worked with the SRI group. What was interesting to me was this. Whenever I mentioned the word consciousness, I mean the reaction was incredible amongst my colleagues. They would walk across the hall to avoid me as though I had the plague. They thought it was contagious or something. I mean, these guys were so, even the word consciousness, which meant if they couldn't deal with the word consciousness, they must have been unconscious. So I set up a group of 40 physicists at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory and did a research group with SRI where what I did is go down and find out how they had designed their remote perception experiments. Primarily the psychic Ingo Swan had said, I can tell you every place on the, about every place on the pian, uh, planet as long as you give me the coordinates. So in this study, it's a longitudinal study. I'm going to talk about 56 experiments. I'm not going to describe every one today. I'll give you some examples. Next. 
This is, uh, you can pull it down a bit. This is some of the people that were in the original group, Everett Harris Walker and me, and a, a conference that was in Iceland in November of 19. 77, Fritjof Capra, I had him invited over to the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, Gary Zukoff, uh, the head of the department, Jeff Chu, David Bohm, and uh, Eugene Wigner and others came and talked to my fundamental physics group. When I got uh, Jeff Chu and another guy named Henry Stapp, a professor of physics at Berkeley, interested, I was accused of corrupting my elders. Next. This is an uh, interesting article from an Encyclopedia of Science published in 1922. Sir Oliver Lodge wrote a um, chapter on psychic science. And this is one example from an experiment that was conducted in the 19, early 1920s. As it says in the uh, report, two maiden ladies did a trip. One stayed in England and the other one went to Scotland. At a certain time and day of each day, they coordinated their remote viewing. So one maiden lady, as it said, went to this uh, church and the other maiden lady drew this drawing of the church from uh, why she was in England and this one was in Scotland. She said it looks wanting that it needs more detail, a very good remote viewing. Another remote viewer, of course, was the Del uh, Oracle of Delphi, which was a group of women in Greece that operated from about 800 to 400 uh, BC and many people would go to her. One general went and he asked uh, about a war that he was going to engage in. She said a great war will be won today. She didn't say that he was going to be on the losing side though. Next. So this is the outline of science. Uh, that was published in 1922 and psychic science was accepted enough that it had a chapter in this encyclopedia. Next. So how do you conduct remote viewing experiments? You can conduct them in a number of ways, but in general what we had is a subject recipient that would uh, participate in the experiments. It could be a secretary or an engineer, whoever's down the hall willing to try and it's open-minded, but they could be skeptical as long as they were open-minded. Uh, we monitored, uh, then you have a monitor with the subject in a laboratory room. I don't know if you, can you hear me if I, I talk from here? It's easier for me to see the transparencies. Then you have a monitor in the laboratory room and then you have someone in the laboratory room that's the monitor that tape records the information that the person gives. And then what we have is the subject usually has pen and paper and draws their impressions. The room should be kind of plain because if you have paintings and whatnot on the wall, they can be distracting to the remote viewing process. 